Hey friends, welcome back to another video. I'm here to intro and kick off this bee and honey themed reading vlog. This is episode three. I've made a video about my bee book collection, which I need to update. I did a vlog where I read some bee themed books. I had a lot of fun with it. I did a second one and this is my third installment. I did this around this time last year. So I always like to squeeze in one of these at least once a year. For those that are new or don't know or haven't watched the other ones, my dad is a beekeeper. I grew up around bees and honey. I still live on the family farm with my husband. I sell honey at farmer's markets in the summer and because books are my thing, it's easy to collect books with bees or honey or something along those lines. So I have a growing collection and I want to get a lot of them read. Hence this kind of video. Now, full disclosure, I'm filming this intro at the end. I started this in the beginning of May, didn't know how long it was gonna go. It is now June 3rd and I'm ending the vlog and I have a lot of books to cover. I read 10 picture books. I read two historical fictions, two non-fictions, a middle grade, and I also started two books that I didn't end up finishing and I'll get to those. But overall, this is mainly a vlog about the books. I did do some bee themed activities throughout the past month, but I didn't really vlog those as much. I just kind of shot some clips here and there. For example, I started sneak peek, my little free library, so I started painting it. I also had two Saturday farmer's markets where I proudly showed off my growing bump, and I read a lot of fun bee honey themed books. So let's kick off the video with that. So I'm checking in with the very first book that I finished for this bee vlog, and that is a nonfiction memoir called The Honey Bus by Meredith May. I first heard of this book, I think from Aldi Books, but then I saw it pop up again on Jolene from Bookworm Adventure Girls channel as well. And then I happened to find it in a little free library like a few days later. So it felt very serendipitous. It's been on my shelves ever since. And I listened to the audiobook of this memoir. I love a good memoir. And this was just so relatable in many ways, in some aspects, not in a lot of aspects. Meredith May tells the story of her childhood upbringing. Her parents got divorced. She had a very distant, abusive mother. Her father wasn't really in the picture, so she and her brother were raised by her grandparents. And ultimately, this is a relationship between her and her grandfather, who was a beekeeper. It is so sweet. Their relationship holds the threat of the book together because there's so much sadness and so much abuse and heartache and trauma that this young girl had to go through. That relationship with her grandfather and her discovering the world of beekeeping and falling in love with bees and honey was just so sweet. And her grandfather reminded me so much of my own dad who is a beekeeper and just the way he does his business and talks about bees and just has all this knowledge. I definitely had a lot of relatability in that aspect. And overall, I loved it. I gave four stars. It ends quite abruptly. Like it's just her childhood. It's from the moment her parents got divorced around the age of four or five to her going to college and so it's that time frame and the book just jumps to an epilogue in 2015 when her grandfather dies and the book just ends so i kind of would have liked more it honestly reminded me a lot of free lunch by brett ogle which is a middle grade nonfiction that i read in march and that one's considered upper middle grade maybe young adult nonfiction about a young boy with an abusive mother and growing up poor because the majority of the story is told from this child's perspective even though it is reflective it is really told from the first person i I'm a little kid and I'm going through this it is very reminiscent of like an upper middle grade book it does cover obviously very heavy topics so I would tread lightly but there's child abuse in here and just the heartbreak of parental divorce and what that does to a child but overall a wonderful fantastic memoir I'm glad that I finally read it and a great start to this vlog already I think more successful than my last B vlog which I didn't really have any luck with adult novels just picture books I do have a huge stack of picture books to get through so I will work on that in the next few days like I said we'll just see how many books I get through but first one done and was a success Hey, so it's May 12th and I have a couple more bee books to check in with you about. This next one actually put me in a little bit of a slump. It took me forever to finish even though it's a middle grade and it's quite a short book, but I really did not like it. Talking about The Last Beekeeper by Pablo Cartaya. Unfortunately, just really did not like my time with this one and it basically turned me off reading for about a week which I know isn't very long, but for a reader like me, it is a long time. This is a post-apocalyptic dystopian kind of society about a young 12-year-old girl and her older sister. And we don't really know exactly what happened, but basically the world kind of ended and there's a society run by an evil mayor and his sister. And these two sisters' parents were exiled. They don't know really what happened to them, if they survived or died or whatnot. You can't really leave this compound that they live in because the world out there is desolate and dangerous. And basically this 12-year-old on her own saves the world and saves the town and destroys this evil mayor and finds some honeybees and the love of beekeeping along the way. It's a very tech heavy book. It is focused on this technologically advanced future where 
like AI and robots are kind of controlling you. And I don't know, I like dystopian, but it just wasn't my kind of read, I think especially in a middle grade. Just found it quite annoying and obnoxious. So ended up giving it two stars. But on the other end, I finished today The Beekeeper of Aleppo by Christy Lefteri, and this was a win. Not quite five stars for me. I'm gonna be thinking about this book, and it was very impactful and beautiful and sad and tragic and well-written, but it wasn't quite that five-star material for me personally, but I totally get why it could be for other people. This is a book for those that love The Kite Runner. Very much gave off those vibes, and not just because it's set in the Middle East, but it's just this story that was quite sad and tragic, but beautiful at the same time, and unraveled and was unpacked very slowly, and you get a really good sense of the characters and the tragedy that they lived through. So those are kind of the themes brought up. This is about a husband and wife who free Aleppo, a Syrian refugees, in 2016. So this is considered historical fiction, but the history that's explored is the like 2010 to 2016 war in Syria. And I think this will be the kind of book that stands the test of time, like The Kite Runner and other modern classics at this point that will really depict a moment of history and a moment in time very well. There is a ton of trauma and sadness in this book, grief and loss. It's not as heavy as you may think. Like it was very sad, but it didn't dwell on anything for too long. And it's just mostly the inner turmoil of this couple and this experience of fleeing a war-torn country, being a refugee and trying to figure out how to survive and how to get to a destination and how to get to family and to hope and it was beautiful would highly recommend hey checking in with my next little bash of bee books that i finished reading first one is wild honeybees an intimate portrait by ingo arndt and jürgen tots this is a coffee table photography book mainly, but also nonfiction. It did have quite a bit of text in it. This book felt like watching a BBC nature documentary about honeybees, honeybees in the wild and their intricate lives and the cool things that they do. These are very marvelous creatures and the photography in here is amazing. The text lacked a little bit for me. It was very dry. It was very scientific, kind of bland, kind of random sometimes, jumped around, was repetitive. Some things were interesting and stood out and I learned some new things about bees, which I'm like at this point, how could I even because I've read so many books about about bees. So I did think the text lacked a little bit and that could just be a lost in translation because the author of the text is a scientist and he's German so maybe he wrote it in German and then it was poorly translated, I'm not sure. But this is primarily a photography book, first and foremost, and in that it is amazing and excels. And it really shows certain aspects that people have never captured before. So that's really cool. And then I finished for this vlog reading The Secret Life of Bees by Sue Mung Kidd. I have had this book on my shelves for years and years and years, and I always thought that I read it and just forgot about it. But after reading this book, I think I would have remembered reading it, so I don't think I actually did read it. So I'm considering this my first time reading this book. Many people love this. Most give it five or four stars. I landed on three and a half. I enjoyed this book for the most part. Had a good time, I'm glad I read it. It was very interesting, but I rate my books primarily on my emotions when reading it and my interest, if I'm drawn to it or not. That is the biggest factor in my rating. This was a good book, I will give it that, but for whatever reason, I found myself a little bit bored. It was a little bit dragging. It was a little bit just lacking in parts, and so that's why it is a little bit down for me, but I still enjoyed my time overall. This is a coming of age story primarily about a 14 year old girl that has experienced some sadness and trauma her life. Her mother died when she was very young. Her father is abusive and she is living in the south with her caregiver who is black. And because some circumstances unfold, she wants to run away and flee. And so she runs away to this farm, this group of ladies who are beekeepers. And they're these sassy, fun black ladies with lots of personality and lots of story. And this is ultimately a story of found family, leaving behind your past, working through trauma, finding oneself, finding love and community and family. And in all of those aspects, it's very sweet. And I can 100% see why so many people gave us five or four stars. Like I said, just for me, it was a little bit boring. There was almost no plot. It's very introspective. It's this young girl just figuring out stuff and processing things, which felt very realistic. The character development here is excellent. I totally bought all of that. Again, just out of enjoyment level, I was a little bit bored. Hey, hey, so just doing my last book check-in. I read 10 picture books for this video, and instead of just documenting each one and vlogging each separately, I'm going to go from least favorite picture book to most favorite picture book out of the 10, and I'll give some reasoning why, and I'll flip through some pictures. 
So this is the stack, starting with Swarm of Bees by Lemony Snicket. The reason I didn't love this one, although the picture style was fun, was that the story really lacked for me. It was unnecessarily silly and overall depicted bees in a negative way. When bees swarm, they are not angry. They are in fact the most calm and cannot sting you because they're full of honey. So it wasn't accurate and that bothered me. Next, Wild Honey from the Moon by Kenneth Craigle. This one was very whimsy and also a bit strange, kind of like a fever dream, but it did depict motherhood in a very beautiful way. Bees in the City by Andrea Chang. This one is all about a boy and his aunt who do beekeeping in Paris. And it was fine, I liked it. Three stars overall, fun, but wasn't a standout. Next, The King of Bees by Lester Lemnack. This was a story about a boy in South Carolina and also I think his aunt that do beekeeping and how he does something that maybe he shouldn't have, but it worked out. I like this picture style. Thank You Bees by Tony Yuli. Very simple, but cute. Next, I had a bunch of great nonfiction, starting with 1001 Bees by Joanna Rezizak. This one had a fun illustration style and had a fun, a random little fun facts about honeybees and what they do and how they behave. This one was a lovely illustration style, Bees, A Honeyed History by Piotr Socha. This is a translated picture book as well, and it is a big one, not only size-wise, like the whole table, but also long, and it has really fun illustration styles, history in here, how bees act, a bunch of fun facts, and this was a really cool picture book, would highly recommend. Next, A is for B, an alphabet book in translation. This was a beautiful book. The focus isn't primarily on bees. It's going through the whole alphabet and how different animals start with different letters in different languages. And there is an audio file for each of these words, which is really cool and helps with the book. There's a QR code in the back that tells you where to go and how to sound out those letters. So this is a really fun book for those that are learning about language or teaching their kids about language. Next, Honeybee, the big Busy Life of Apis Mellifera by Candace Fleming. This was a really cool picture book about the life cycle of the honeybee and the journey that it goes on in its short little life. I really appreciated the accuracy of this one. And finally, as a bit of a surprise, this random little book just hit the heart. It was a beautiful story about how we first feared bees, but the things that we can learn from them. And the illustration style was unique, but well done. And I just absolutely loved the message in this one. So that one was my favorite of the bunch. So just for fun, I wanted to show my random collection of things in my house and in my life that have bees on them or honey on them. You know that I collect books on the theme. Well, it's also permeated to other aspects of my life. It's really easy to be gifted this stuff. I know this for my mom. My mom has a way bigger collection of random stuff in the house with bees and honey. I have a much smaller one, but I just wanted to show you for funsies all the random little things in my everyday life that have bees on them. So starting with some easy stuff like clothes. So I have a bee hat. This is actually the most recent addition to our collection. Don't mind the random stuff in the background, but it says be kind. Got it at Walmart, so that was a fun find. I have bee masks back when everyone used to wear masks a lot. This is just one, I have like several of these. I have some, lol, not sponsored, me undies bee underwear. Bee socks, of course, easy. A bee blanket that I use all the time. Some bee shirts, I have a ton more. This is just a few that I own in my collection. I did get my first bee baby thing, little hat and a blanket. For jewelry, let's hop over to my dresser. These are floral, but I do have some honeycomb themed jewelry. Let's head over to my bathroom. In my bathroom, hello son. I have a bee scrunchie, use all the time, love it. Love the brand Pharmacy, and I have some products from them. This is a like mask and serum collection. I have their eye cream, which I love, and their setting spray, which I also love. And I know that I have chapstick and other random bee stuff in the bathroom as well. Also the squeaking is my shoes. Also in my house, let's see, we have a bee home sweet home little art decor thing. This is my little nonfiction stack candle holder. You guys know what my bookshelves look like, but just in case you forgot, there's my 
fiction B stack. Then in my kitchen over here, a couple random things. I got a mug with a B on it. I have a like ramekin little random dish with honeycomb design. A B spatula and a B holder, you know, so like your dish doesn't get hot if you put it in the microwave kind of thing. And I recently got this in like a baby shower gift thing. Um, not for me, like I want it in a baby shower. A little tea towel with bees on it. And then finally to end in my purse, I have a, this is like my little satchel that I keep like hand sanitizer and gum and like things that you need in your purse. Keep it in here and also a little B like notebook to write something in if I need it in my purse. So that's the random little stuff in my house, in my life that has bees on it. I know that I have a ton more in random places all throughout. And like I said, my mom has a lot too. I don't necessarily want to collect this stuff, but like I said, it just enters into my life at random times. Anywho, hope you enjoyed that. Let me close out this video by summarizing how my book reading went this bee themed episode. Overall, I completed 15 books. So more than last time, granted 10 of them were picture books. I mentioned in my intro that I started two more but didn't get to finishing. One of them is a nonfiction that I own that I still plan on reading. So this is not a firm, did not finish. This is just, I didn't have time to finish this book because this required me to physically read it. I couldn't listen to the memoir of it and I just need to set aside some time to read it in another future video or just future time. That is Honey and Venom, Confessions of an Urban Beekeeper. I just really wasn't jiving with this one. It was when I was in the reading slump of reading The Last Beekeeper. So I just put this one down and I will come back to it. The book that I did end up abandoning and will not be returning to is The Hive by Gail or Jill Hornby. I don't know where I first saw this, but I started reading the ebook and I didn't make it very far because it is terrible. Just horribly written. The first two chapters were not good. The gist that I got was it's set in some school in Australia and it's about these moms that are just vicious with each other and there's like a queen bee and it was just really cheesy, awful writing. I then looked at the reviews and I'm like, oh, this is terribly rated, probably for good reason. I'm not gonna continue this and force myself through it. So that one I put down quickly. But to not dwell on all the negatives, I did have three successful four star reads, the photography book about bees, which was amazing, The Keeper of Aleppo, which was that beautiful historical fiction, um, not really, but about the Syrian refugee experience and the memoir, The Honey Bus, which was also a lovely read. So those were great. And then for picture books, my camera's on my pile. So hold on a second. My top three picture books were The Thing About Bees, Honey Bee, and A is for B. And there were other ones that you saw that I did enjoy as well and were great picture book reads, but those three were the top three. So that concludes this episodic reading vlog of reading books about bees and honey or with them in the title or the cover. It was a fun one. Please let me know if any of these books piqued your interest. And thank you so much for watching today. And I'll see you guys in another video soon. Bye.